On this episode of the Ritual Misery podcast, uh, the United Tag Team was invaded. We also invaded Disney World and Wisconsin. Uh, who is Herbert Jeems? That sounds familiar, oddly. I bet she's not from the ISS, though. And the probably the most intelligent person Kent and I will both agree is more intelligent than us is our guest tonight. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 177 for Thursday, the 14th of June, 2018. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent, we don't matter. Tom Merritt, how you doing? Hey man, thanks for having me on. It's good to be back. <laughs> oh man, uh, so it, we've, uh, this, is, this has been this has been a long time coming, Tom. You are hard to, hard to schedule. It's been 77 episodes. Yeah. like 77 in, too many, uh, in my opinion. Well, I mean, you, you could say that, but we'll see if you're here next week. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know I won't be. <laughs> I want to be, too hard to but I won't. <laughs> Kenton, how was, uh, how was your week, man? What you up to? Uh, it was good, dude. So two weeks ago, I did a solo show for Ritual Misery, mm-hmm. and neither one of us did a show last week because we were both in travel mode. Right, right. Uh, and ha- has that episode that you did uh, published yet? Um, as of airtime, no, it has not. <laughs> <laughs> just, just say yes. <laughs> oh man, um, yeah. So you Publish went to it right now while we're talking. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Pull it, Tom, Tom, and do it during the post show. Uh, yes, it's published. Um, so we were we were all traveling this week, uh, which is uh, well. I guess Tom, you weren't traveling this week. You you traveled a couple weeks ago, but this is the first yeah, time yeah. we had you on since. Um, Australia, Wisconsin, and Florida. One of these things is not like the other. <laughs> one of them is not domestic, and one of them is not hot. <laughs> Right, because one of them's in in fall. See, like every way you go, there's something different about each of them. <laughs> uh, Tom, uh, if you could, uh, we're going to get a little bit more travel stuff later on. But if you could summarize your trip to Australia in like um, f- forty three words, okay, uh, or less, or do I or, have to or hit less? 43 exactly? if, if you can hit forty three, I mean, we're not going to count though, because I'm not going to count. Yeah, <laughs> um, it. Uh, a, a lot of great beer, a lot of great people, uh, a lot of driving on the left side of the road, and f- the food there is great, and they serve American-sized portions. Um, loved uh, everything I did there. S- Sydney was great. I'd been there before. I'd never been to Melbourne before. Melbourne's now one of my favorite cities on the planet, uh, and I really enjoyed the whole point of going there, which was for my nephew's wedding. He married an Australian. He's going to archaeology school there, and it was a blast. Now, I have to ask, was the driving on the left side of the road related to the beer? No. uh, (laughs) Driving on the right side would have been related to the beer. Uh, I I have to be honest. The the first... So so in Sydney, we were just there for a couple of days wandering around, and then I rented a car, drove down, because the wedding was happening out in the sticks Mm. uh, in in a little town called Mossvale, and we had to drive to get there. That was mm-hmm. kind of, you know, other you either drove or you hired someone to drive you. <laughs> so we we show up and the first night. They're like, oh, we're, we're all going to pub trivia. So my nephew and all his friends and his fiance and all her friends and the family and my sister is there. And we all go out to the pub quiz. And I'm like, J- I, I have to drive home <laughs> on the left. I have, so I really need to limit the beers. Um and uh, and and I did, yeah I did all right. They I, I loved every beer I had there. I was drinking VB Victoria Bitter, which several Australians criticized me for. They're like, that's like drinking Budweiser in America. I'm like, what's wrong with drinking Budweiser in America? <laughs> uh, but, uh, I, I, I heard the same thing about Fosters. <laughs> Nobody drinks Fosters. Australians, they, I never even saw it on offer at any <laughs> bar I was in. Like it, it's a myth. It would be like if you went overseas and everyone's like, we drink Michael's, the American beer. And you're like, I've never even heard of that. What is it? (laughs) Yeah. Well, actually, Tom, a (laughs) small brewery in. No. Uh, uh, No. Speaking of breweries, though, I visited a a bunch of uh, 
breweries and in and, and places to get beer and all kinds of wonderful places in, in Wisconsin. Cause that's kind of like the, the, the state sport mm. I think in Wisconsin is beer drinking. Yeah. Um, but yeah, was, beer in things and drinking it like beer in your brat, beer in your cheese, beer in your belly. Yep. Beer in your exactly. Beer. Yeah. Uh, every, every restaurant that we went to and we went to a lot of them, they all had three things on their, their menu, beer, cheese curds, and something that's beer flavored. Mm. Whether whether it was yeah. the brats or the cheese sauce or the pretzels right. or or whatever <laughs> whatever it is, um, but yeah. So one thing that I learned about Wisconsin that I didn't previously know is that the population of mosquitoes far outnumbers everything else combined in the state. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was I that. unruly. Yeah, um, but yeah. Besides besides the mosquitoes, I had a really good time. Uh, oh, one other thing that I learned is, you know, you know, when you go to a, a big party and, and, you know, a lot of people are having fun and then, you know, the neighbors, the neighbor kids come and visit and every now and then like one will bring their puppy over to show or something like that. Some new toy or something. The kids in Wisconsin bring their baby cows. They bring their calves over to show <laughs> off to the guests. <laughs> and why wouldn't they? Um, yeah, such so, fine calves. Uh, th- and this- you, did you look at them and say veal? I absolutely did. In fact, I, I tweeted out, Amos is showing you on the screen right now, that I tweeted out a picture of this calf that the children brought over, and I commented, veal, anyone? Veal, anyone? Uh, what part of Wisconsin were you in? Uh, about a half hour north of the Dells. Okay. So, uh, All right. Yeah, right yeah. A little over an hour north of of, um, of Madison. Hmm. My, uh, my brother lives north of Green Bay, so east. Oh, way of further you north. Were. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wisconsin Amos, is- what about... Wisconsin's one of the states I've never been to. One it's of the, one fun, of the few. Man. One of like the five. I know, I know you like beer, mm. I, so I therefore I know you would enjoy Wisconsin. Where, Wisconsin's did, where did you not end up? Exciting, though? but it's enjoyable, right? That well said. Yeah, that is that is accurate. Yeah. Where did you end up, Amos? Uh, we went to the hottest place on earth called Georgia. And then followed, Speaking of mosquitoes. followed that up with the second hottest called South Carolina and then spent um, uh, the majority of my vacation was in Florida at Disney World. We had a blast. It was a lot of fun. Had things planned out with do totally do everything completely differently if I went again. So if you're looking to go to Disney World, let me know. I can give you the scoop on all of it. Uh, trial by error. Let me let, learn from my mistakes. Um, and yeah, it was so blistering hot. It, we were hitting highs of like 58 when we left here in Alaska and we got there and the lowest temperature we saw the entire time we were there was like 74. Nice. And we were just melting the entire time. It was ridiculously <laughs> hot. I don't so when can we expect your book, what not to do at Disney world? Oh, uh, you know, that'd be, that, that actually probably be a pretty good idea. I should do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should ebook that right away. Yeah. Yeah. How, how, how not to survive Disney world. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now I will tell you that of that entire time, that, that whole vacation, um, I stayed away from everything, social media and podcast related. It was a genuine vacation because I can't social media without it being podcast related and podcast related and work. Like I, I went ahead and took both of those and just put them on a shelf and didn't do anything related to either one. And it was really relaxing. I, I have like 300 posts on Facebook that is begging me to add, to answer. Um, I finally <laughs> checked Twitter for the first time yesterday. <laughs> um, wow. I got to tell you, I, yeah. I took a vacation vacation. Like I didn't do, I didn't. I should do that else. one of these days. It was nice. It was, it was, it really took a lot of the cloud. And what it did is it, it taught me that there's a lot of apps on my phone I need to get rid of because I'm either just not using them or I'm using them far too much. Right. Yes. So that absolutely. <clears throat> absolutely. Uh, see what you did there? <laughs> see, don't, don't start Kent. He will not let that go. <laughs> right. Um, um, yeah. So speaking of apps on your phone, have you, have you guys ever used Skyview? or night sky or anything like that. Uh, they're the augmented reality apps that allow Hmm. you to identify stars and Mm -hmm. constellations and things like that in the sky. Yep. So I, I have a few of those on my phone. Um, so quick story. 
a few nights ago, I was sitting outside. Uh, Steph and I were just, we just walked outside and I saw something streaking across the sky. And I was like, what the hell? Is that an airplane? It was a super bright star, if you will, flying across the sky. I was like, no, it's too slow to be an air, or it's too fast to be an airplane, but too slow to be a meteorite. So I whipped out my night sky app and I saw it was the International Space Station flying directly over my house. Nice. Uh, it was really cool. I've, I've seen it once before where, where I actually could identify that it was the ISS. Uh, that was years ago when I was living in Germany. I'd, I identified the ISS flying over. Uh, but this occurrence, the thing was way brighter. Like I, it must have been in a, a closer orbit with Earth or something. I or maybe because the last time I saw it, I was in Germany, so a different mm. hemisphere, or just a uh, different or, or, or conditions, all, basically, or something, yeah, yeah, or something, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know, but it was it was incredible seeing it so so bright and so close. But then, as I was looking at the sky, there, I saw two other incredibly bright objects, and it was it was a couple of planets. It was Jupiter and Venus. Which, uh, Tom, I think you might be right with the atmospheric conditions because. Those you know tend to be pretty bright in the sky, but they were particularly mm -hmm. bright that night. So anyway, that was my that was my geeky experience of the week. It was it was really cool seeing all of that That's really cool activity yeah. in the sky. Hmm. Uh, Tom, now you had some visitors this week. I did. I uh, so talk. so so my weekly my weekly recap would be uh, that Bryce Castillo, aka Neshcom, uh, Justin Robert Young, and Brian Brushwood, the Night Attack team. Uh, were in my house uh, because the Night Attack folks did a show on the road in San Diego on last Saturday and then uh, came up here, crashed at the house, and did a show here in L.A. Uh, that they were nice enough to invite me to be a part of uh, at the Westside Comedy Theater. It was great. It was fun. Thanks to everybody who came out and said hi. Uh, and then, like, one by one, they slowly evaporated. Uh, Monday morning, I just got a text. I hadn't even got out of bed. And Bryce was like, got to catch my plane. See you later. Uh, and then Justin Robert Young was hanging around. We did Daily Tech News show with him here. And then he was like, see ya, folks. I'm out of here. Uh, and then Brian stayed one more night. He actually uh, st stuck around and did Cord Killers. And then he left uh, the next morning. But mm. it was it was a blast having those guys here. Hotel Merit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I almost ran out of couches, but I didn't. <laughs> um, uh, a friend of the show, Squid, uh, Sean, he uh, was actually at that show, the second show, and finally got to meet everybody in Diamond Club and uh, went took to Twitter to curse us out for not being there, Kent. Uh, <laughs> I did. I did notice that. <laughs> yeah. So so next time we're at South by without him, uh, that's that's open license. Oh, yes. That's going to happen. <laughs> um, all right. So I, I have to I have a confession to make. Uh -oh. I I have how many years has it been since your last confession? Oh shit, that's actually a genuine question. Like I could, um, let's see, I'm 41 now, <laughs> so I'm 13. It's been some, 41. Uh, 28, 28 years since my last oh. confession. Yeah, Ooh, okay. Act, like an actual formal confession, huh? Yeah, bless you, my son. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's 43 hail marys uh, to our fathers. <laughs> Yeah, it's always out of proportion. Like 117 Hail Marys on our father yeah. and uh, 16. <laughs> yeah. um, my my wife just got called out recently because she didn't know um, the, our father. She didn't know the words to it. So she was at a funeral and they were saying it and like her family realized she didn't know it. Like, oh, you don't you don't you don't you don't church up there in Alaska? And she's like, mm, no, no, no. <laughs> Don't Not do so that. <laughs> so uh -oh. she she tried to call me out on like I bet you don't know it either. And I was like, no, I do. I went I went to catechism. I I, I suffered through that. <laughs> I've played that game. Um, no, I I have a. I don't want to say a new love in my life. I have a newfound adoration. Um, my daughter Amber is now living with us. Mm -hmm. It's been. Over ten years since since she's lived with me because of the whole divorce and separation and everything else, and I just got to say, Amber is one of the most amazing people I've ever met in my life. I fucking love my kids. Um, hanging out with them in Disney World and then bringing her back here and just just be, without the pressure of her having to leave at the end of summer and go back to her mom's house and her just being able to hang out here and just be herself and not worry about what comes out of her mouth because she's not going back there. 
Mm -hmm. It's man, it's it just it's amazing. It's so awesome. I, I, yeah, I've always been a kid. How old is she? She's eighteen. She turned eighteen and graduated high school. So her, like, mom, her mom couldn't hold her anymore. So now she's here. She's like a real person. Yeah. Oh, and it's crazy. <laughs> like like having to switch. Well, Tricare is the military healthcare thing. I can't call to switch her over from East Tricare East to Tricare West. She has to call because she's eighteen. Because she's an adult. Yeah. Oh my, oh my god. <laughs> like all wow. these things. Like I can't do stuff for her anymore. She has to do it herself. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and she just turned eighteen in March. So it's not like it's been a long deal. You know, it's just yeah, been a couple yeah, months. Yeah. And yeah, it's it's totally. Completely different because when Kent and I joined or got 18, we turned 18, we joined the military. Like we immediately had to do everything on our own. It was like, hey, you're off. Um, but yeah, seeing things through her point of view and just having casual non visitation uh, conversations with her and just being able to relax and let her be herself. And she has this, this sense of like freedom now that she's, you know, kind of settled into what she's going to do for the next couple of years. And man, she's just, she's amazing. And I'm just glad to have my damn kids. It's just awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. Um, uh, Tom, now you have uh, apparently picked up a new gadget. Uh, yeah. So there's there's this guy, Chris, who's a patron of Daily Tech News Show. And one of his ways of supporting the show is I, I, I can't tell if he's got an employee discount or something going on, uh, <laughs> but he will buy me uh, a gadget. Not not very often, hmm. uh, but he bought a Pixel uh, a Pixel C, the tablet for me a couple of years ago, uh, so that I could use the Android tablet and and I use it. I, I actually used it this morning. I'm still using that thing. But he heard about Pixel C not uh, getting new Android updates anymore after this last one, so he sent me the Pixel Book, which is a Chromebook that Google makes. It runs about 800 bucks for the base model. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it runs the Chrome OS, which means it's not windows. It's not Mac. Uh, I've played with Chromebooks before, but I've never really lived in them, especially since they added the Android store. So the mm -hmm. way Chromebook works, it's got the Chrome OS. Uh, so it, it basically can do v anything a browser can do. It can do, and a couple of other things. But now with the Android store on board, it can do Microsoft Office because Microsoft Office has, has an Android store, and it, it 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 can do anything an Android tablet can do. So I was like, oh, okay, well this this will be nice. I'm not sure it'll replace the the Pixel C because that's a smaller tablet, but I'll try it out. Man, I am just geeking out over this thing because I forget I'm not using a. A, a normal multitasking operating system like Windows or Mac mm -hmm. uh, because I'm just in Chrome and I'm doing all the things I would normally do in Chrome. And then I've got these Android apps and they they look on this laptop like a normal app. Like when I'm using Excel, I don't think like I'm using the tablet version. Like it just feels normal. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's got a great keyboard, better keyboard uh, than either my Surface Book or my MacBook Pro. Uh, and I, I'm just, mm. I'm just geeking out over the fact that like, man, I, I haven't even like, I haven't tried to use it for things like podcast recording or stuff. I'm sure that's when I'd run into like, oh, it doesn't do this very well. But mm -hmm. sure. I'm impressed by this thing. So, so uh, has has Chromebook finally arrived? Is it is this like the the first time well, you've, you've really been impressed? And this is the first time I've used one. I'm in like. I actually could like if I didn't have to do specialty things with my laptop, like podcasting on the road and stuff, I could easily switch to this thing like word processing, email storage. I've got Dropbox. Mm -hmm. All my Dropbox files are connected to it. Uh, it's 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 great. And there was a story out today in Ars Technica that there's some firmware indications that Google's getting set up to allow the Chromebooks to multi-boot so that you could install Windows or Ubuntu oh, wow. or other Linux distros right. on it. So that just opens it up even more. Jeez. Yeah. I So last year when my son graduated high school, my gift to him, his graduation gift was a laptop, a new laptop. And I test drove several different different uh, types of laptops to see what, what would work best for him in college. Um, well, I say I test drove them. Uh, he and I test drove them together. It wasn't a surprise mm -hmm. gift. He knew it was coming. And okay. uh, a Chromebook was, I don't remember which model it was, but a Chromebook was one of them that we test drove. And he ultimately determined that it wasn't for him because he wanted to use like office applications and, and things like that. Uh, was it before the Android I was, store was integrated or? Yeah. It, yeah well, at yeah. least on this model. Yeah. And yeah. I, I was like, well, 
maybe I want one of these things. I ultimately <laughs> didn't buy one. But it's yeah, I had the kind of the same experience though, Tom. Like most of what I do with my laptop is browser based, very much internet type yeah, stuff yeah. and mm. not not real application heavy. And um, yeah, I, I think that's I think Chromebooks are are very viable now, especially with the Android store integration. I I honestly haven't used one at all, but pretty much everything I do for podcasting besides the recording itself and the, you know, the besides the files, like all the, the prep work and everything else is all done in Chrome because you can't have a shared Chrome account that has all the links and everything else in it. Um, and I could see the, all my prep work, like all the, the backside stuff happening, but I'm, yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's when, it's when you start getting to the, to the genuine multitasking. Like I can't compress a file while I'm over here yep. juking with the video or, you know, well, it doesn't have the apps. It can do the multitasking <clears throat> if Android has the apps, mm. Uh, it just, it, it doesn't have OBS. It doesn't have levelator. It doesn't have audio hijack, you know, right. it does, stuff yeah. like that. But this but morning, um, uh, MacBook pro operating system was, uh, was, uh, was updating. So I was like, Oh, I, I need to prep for daily tech news show. I'll just grab the pixel book. And I, f I forgot, like it was already, it was done updating and it was waiting for me. And I was just still working away. That's awesome. On the pixel book. Yeah. Chromebooks, I think are, I think they make great auxiliary, uh, hardware. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and so I got. I got. I do have to ask: Did either of you watch any movies this weekend? E the Post. I watched The Post. Oh, that's right. You mentioned that on Court Killers. Yeah, yeah. But that was at home. I didn't go to a theater this weekend. Hmm. Kent. Now, yeah, Kent, I. Kent, you better say no because you've already seen all the damn movies I want to watch, and I've been holding <laughs> out to watch because uh, I had to. I had to buy Disney World, so I wasn't spending any money on movies. Yeah, no, I don't <laughs> think I watched any movies this week. I was traveling this weekend, so mm. um, oh, I, I actually I did. I watched The Disaster Artist on the airplane. Oh, nice. That that's the movie about the the making of the room. Yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah. Whew, okay, boy, first of all, was... that movie is meta to begin with, just because it's it's a movie about the making of a movie through the eyes of like some of the people that were there and the interpretations it's, it's just it's just really it's yeah it's, the movie is a trip if if you guys have seen the room and and enjoyed it at all I, I guarantee you will enjoy the disaster artist like man it's it's all about tommy Wiseau and how eccentric he is and the crazy thing to me is the movie the making of the movie was fully supported by tommy and he actually appears in the movie as a, like a, a character, not himself. Right. And interacts with, with James Franco, who's playing Tommy. Right. And it's, it is the most bizarre meta thing. I don't know. It was the, just, the, it was a joy. The thing that sold me on it when I was, when I was hearing about it is that Tommy Wiseau didn't watch the movie to approve it. He waited to watch the movie until it was shown in the preview, like the, the open theater preview. And he, he got first pick at his seat, but then he watched it with everybody else who was watching it for the first time. And yep. at the end, his I forget what his comment was, but it was basically like, yeah, all right. <laughs> like it was very, yeah. very basic, very Tommy Wizzo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> was, are, um, you, are you a fan of The Room, Tom? I have never seen The Room. Me neither. Yeah. Oh, I know about The Spoons. That's all I know about it. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The room is is great. I mean, it's a it's a terrible movie. So let's get, let's say that. But the, the movie knows but it's, it's terrible, though. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, it does now. <laughs> <laughs> but it it very quickly became a cult classic because of just how uh, accidentally funny it is. Mm. And it's it's one of those things. It's kind of like Rocky Horror Picture Show now, where people just gather together to watch it for the. 83rd time or whatever. And yeah, it's this generation's Rocky or, Horror. Totally. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, so I haven't, I, I did watch, um, Oh, what did I watch on the, on the plane? I didn't watch anything on the way out there. I was too busy trying to sleep so I could do a, a drive from Atlanta to Columbia. Um, but on the way back, I watched the force awakens again. I had not seen it since theater. Hmm. And, oh, wow. um, I, I, I had reservations when I originally watched it, Kent, and you know that. Um, watching it the second time, those reservations are still there, but they're much more muted. Like the whole uh, the, the the little extra adventure that that Rose and Finn go on. It, oh, you it, said the Force Awakens, so you mean you, you mean, mean Last Jedi? Oh, oh, the Last Jedi, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, got it. Got it. 
Yeah, it uh, it uh, cause yeah, it that whole that whole little extra scene when I watched it initially, I I was like, ah, this is this is taking me away from the main story, but now that I've seen it twice on the second viewing, it was like this is a welcome break because it's getting a little intense over here. So let's do this. And it, it just as this gets intense, now that starts to drop off. And it's a really good balance. Ryan Johnson did, did a great job. And I, I'm sure the more I watch it, the more I'm going to recognize just how, how wrong I was with my initial reservations. Yeah. Now, if that happens with, uh, with Rogue One, I'll be in, I'd be really impressed. Cause <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm still waiting on, on you to watch Solo. Uh, yeah. So, I, I really want to talk to you about that. <laughs> uh, I have, I have uh spoiling times I need to catch up on that. I can't listen to because of solo and Deadpool too. Well, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So here you go. So Tom, what did you think about the part where, <laughs> so here's the thing about that totally crazy reveal that you didn't yeah. expect was coming. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the part that gets you about about um, Deadpool two is when Solo shows up. That's, that's it. Kind of <laughs> takes yeah, you out a little shows bit. up in Solo. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's really <laughs> meta like that. Hey, um, let's get to the to to the, uh, let's make sure I got it turned up. What you do? Okay, now let's hit this. Welcome to your BT Movie Draft Minute, presented by DiamondClub.tv for the week of June eleventh, two thousand eighteen. I'm your host, Big Voice J. Today, I wrote a song about a tortilla. Actually, it's uh, more of a rap. Let's go to the scoreboard. Team Walking Drunk is in last place with $47.9 million. Team The Vod Squad's in fifth place thanks to strong debuts from Hereditary and Ocean's 8, bringing their total to $69.4 million. Team Movie Party's in fourth place with $343.8 million. Team Retro Misery's in third place with $373.7 million. Team Game Night is in second place with $419.4 million. And in first place, on their way to a billion, it's Team Have a Drink with $700. $36.4 million. That's your movie draft minute. All totals are accurate as of Wednesday, June 13th, 2018. So jealous of Team Have a Drink. Oh boy. Yeah. Did, um, uh, Amos, uh, we're 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 gonna lose another spot. No, this no, week. Uh, see, I, I have mixed feelings because we knew we were gonna lose first place. Um <laughs> oh, that was a given. Yeah, because it, we did not get Avengers. Losing second place, I thought we were going to lose second place a lot faster than we did. We we held on to it for quite a while. But I did not expect Movie Party to be creeping up on our back end as qu- close as they are now. But I'm still impressed at how well we're holding holding the holding close to to second place. We have some great movies coming out. Like we have a chance of getting second place. Uh I would say an outside chance. It's still uh, a chance though. So you're saying there's a chance. Right, yeah. I, so movie <laughs> movie party is going to overtake third place, probably even second place. I think in the in the next week, uh, mm-hmm. they've got Incredibles two coming out this weekend, yeah. and that is going to blow us out of the water. What? What? How far we? We're like thirty thousand, or I'm sorry, thirty million ahead. I think right now. Of yeah, them. roughly. Um, that's yeah, that's not gonna last, dude. Mm-mm. We don't have another movie coming out until Transylvania three, which is about a month out. Yeah, but I mean, Game yeah. Night only has Predator left, and that's the last the last week. They're only going to get four weeks of that or whatever. So, um, like I said, we still we, we're still in there. We're still in there because we got some good stuff coming too. So yeah, I, I, I'm confident we're not going to get last. <laughs> that's about as far as I'm going to take. I'm confident we're not going to get first. Uh, so I mean, it bounces <laughs> out, right? We're somewhere in the middle. Uh, exactly. <laughs> uh, but um, hey, oh Tom, you'll you'll be happy to hear that we have a brand new uh, short link for for this because remember uh, last week on Cord Killers, I was struggling with the uh, with the short link because it was kind right, of yeah, uh, yeah. unwieldy. Um, it is now tinyurl.com/slash bteamdraft18, all nice. lowercase. Mm. Easy to remember, <laughs> and, and yeah, of course so, it's in the show notes as well. So. Yeah, for all of you at home that want to follow along, check it out. Um, we're, we're not quite as sophisticated as the A team or, or or whatever, but uh, we we we're we're, 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 we're <laughs> Man, proudly getting there. I look at Team Have a Drink because I have Avengers: Infinity War in, in our movie draft, mm-hmm. and I look at Team Have a Drink, and they're like, "Oh yeah, but we also have I Feel Pretty and Super Troopers Two and yeah. Crazy Rich Asians." And I'm sitting there with Breaking In and Hereditary <laughs> in our draft. I'm like, <laughs> right. "You did it right." Yeah, they um they they actually made out pretty good. How much did that go for? Uh, sixty six. They they got it for sixty six in our draft. Yeah, also so. that's a steal. That mm-hmm. makes all the difference. Oh. 
Yeah. Although Book Club is coming in at 11 million per uh, fake dollar spin. So that's doing pretty good as well. That was a surprise. Yeah, we we still got the uh, the, the purchase of the draft. We yeah. got uh, we got a quiet place for fourteen bucks. Oh, that's a yeah, that's yeah. definitely a steal. So, <clears throat> good times had all around. Um, what's uh, what, what do we got next, Kent? Um, wh- wh- where where should we be sending people if they want to make sure that we uh, do better than next year's draft? <laughs> well, if if you want to give us more money to spend on anything, not necessarily. Uh, <laughs> movie draft bucks uh head over to patreon.com slash ritual misery uh show us that you give a fuck by giving us a buck mm. uh and and all those things go towards uh well we, we didn't have to buy kent a new mixer this year so that's a plus uh <laughs> Thank God for that. a few weeks ago tom i i spilled a little bit of beer into my mixing he, board he donated some beverage to his mixer <laughs> Mixer was but thirsty. Was able, yeah. But the mixer was, was underage to, and couldn't handle it. So <laughs> <laughs> I was actually able to repair it and uh yeah, it saved us some some Patreon money. <laughs> um hey, uh Kent, we got a we got a little game you uh you created this week. Do you have a stinger for it? No, I do not okay, have a stinger so for it. So you because... that means right? That means you gotta make one up right now. Go. It's time for the geek battle. That, Amos versus Tom. No, yeah. no more I stingers from you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <Yeah, scratch that. laughs> I used to have the uh, the current geek one. Uh, I could have played, but it's 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 gone. It's not in the, I'm not on this app anymore because this app sucks <laughs> and I hate it. Uh, but yeah, so I figured that we've got Tom as our guest this week, and he's a, a well known geek. Amos, we've known for a long time that you're a geek. So I was like, why not pit the geekiness of Amos versus the geekiness of Tom? But Mm. you guys are not necessarily geeky in the same ways or in the Mm -hmm. same, uh, fandoms, if you will. He's, he's he's intelligent. I'm a smart (laughs) ass. There you go. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. You're a smart ass. He's actually smart. Yeah. Hey, whatever. Uh, (laughs) You use your words. I'm not a smart ass. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, uh, definitely not sarcastic. No. Uh, <laughs> so I decided to take a, a page from the uh, <clears throat> excuse me, take a take a page from the the current geek playbook, oh. and come up with a separate quiz for both of you. I'm not going to play this exactly the way that it that it runs on on current geek. Now, um, now a little a little backstory. Last time we had Tom on, we had Scott on at the same time and we actually had a, a, an early draft of the uh current geek rule book. Um yeah, see there you go. He's 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 flipping through it now. Uh we yeah. had we had an early draft and Well, that's it, volume 1. That's yeah. volume 1. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, yeah. it was the the early draft was, was so inaccurate and had been superseded so many times that Tom actually uh uh told me I had to mail it back to him. Uh, I wasn't allowed to keep it. So I'm interested to see how, how yours, how you you rewrote the rules, Kent. Uh, yeah. It was an uncorrected proof that you had. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was unauthorized uh, copy. So. Right. Yeah. So uh, unfortunately uh, m- mine self-destructed. So I do, I do not have that rule book, uh, which is good because I'm, we're not playing the, the current geek quiz. So one twist that I decided to throw in here is I'm not going to tell you your topics because the answer to your first question is going to be the topic of your quiz. Oh, okay. <laughs> the first question is, what's the topic of your quiz? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, Amos, uh, what is the topic of your quiz? No. Uh, uh, 43. No? Um, right. All right. So actually, so Amos, I want you to give me, give me a number uh, between 1 and 100. 43. See, I was okay. right. I was already right. Like I already answered yeah. the question. Like, so, all right. So you, <laughs> you did get it. I just ran a, a a random number generator to see what I came up with, and it was an odd number, and you gave an odd number. So you get to start. Oh, there you go. Okay. All right. Uh, you ready? I, I will begin the failure now. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right, Amos. This pastime created by Gary Gygax and Dave Arneson is often considered the epitome of geekdom and was falsely linked in the 1980s to Satanism and teen suicide. That would be Dungeons and Dragons. Very good, sir. Dungeons and Dragons is your topic. Oh, shit. Now, I'm, I'm actually like, like can they, as long as it's 3.5, I'm good. Like, 
<laughs> well, we shall see. We shall see. All right, Tom, your mm. first question. Mm. A series of films grew into a media franchise that consisted of books, comic books, video games, cartoons, etc. that was tightly monitored and controlled for continuity. That continuity was largely abandoned in, two, in 2014 after the original production company was purchased by a large corporation. What branding was this franchise known as prior to the purchase? Uh, obviously, it was one of the works of Stanislav Lem, Memoirs Found in a Bathtub. Uh, <laughs> or it could be Star Wars. That is half correct. It is Star <laughs> Wars. What branding did the uh, fr the extension of the franchise, what was it known as prior to the purchase? Oh, uh, the expanded I'll, I'll, universe. There you go. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. A, that's what okay. I was looking for. I was going to give you the the clue that it's it's currently known as Legends, and that would have been a giveaway, right, of course. Right. Uh, All right. So can can I have a question? Can I use reference material? Uh, negative. You can check my answers after the fact. Oh, I definitely will. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Amos. <clears throat> second question. Okay. For you, Dragonlance. One of the most popular campaign settings mm -hmm, mm -hmm. was created by Laura and Tracy Hickman. Mm -hmm. Its world of Kryn was then expanded into novels by Tracy Hickman and previous Ritual Misery guest Margaret Weiss. Right. The first such novel, Dragons of Autumn Twilight, was mm -hmm. published in what year? 1985. Oh. Uh, is it 86? It's like March of 86. You're going the wrong direction. It was 1984. Ooh. Wow. Okay. Okay. All right. The score is one to one. Tom, are you ready for your second question? Yes, I have my Jaina Solo action figure. I'm ready. <gasps> oh, that is perfect. Oh, and, is, and in typical Tom fashion, he had it readily available. Huh. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and check your answer now, Kent. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. So Tom, taking a cue from... Or I'm sorry, Amos taking a cue from Tom um, has a, a Dragonlance book you, readily you, available. You, you are correct. It is uh, uh, 1984. <laughs> so, thank you for fact checking. All right, Tom. In the movie Solo, a Star Wars story, some of the characters are adept at the martial art called Terrace Kazi. Hmm. Many people mistakenly believe the fighting style originated in the 1997 PlayStation game Masters of Terrace Kazi. It was actually created by author and multiple-time Ritual Misery guest, Steve Perry, for his 1996 Star Wars novel. What is the title of that book? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm Ooh. actually horrible at the Expanded Universe, and I feel <laughs> really extra embarrassed that you've had the author on the show multiple times. <laughs> so I'm going to pull a Tom myself. I have readily available... Shadows of the Empire. Book, Shadows of the Empire. <laughs> Yeah. That was the actual origin of Terrace Kazi. And I feel bad that I didn't mention it on Spoiler in Time last week. <laughs> <laughs> no, that would have been even better because I probably would have forgotten. And then I would be like, you could lord it over me even more. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, Amos. The score is still tied one to one. Your next question. Wizards of the Coast is the current publisher of Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. However, it was originally published by a company called TSR. Mm-hmm. What do the initials TSR mean? I knew this at one time, uh, about 3,000 beers ago. Um, that means to so regret that oh. you don't know what it stands for. <laughs> um, no, I, I, don't, I don't remember. Tactical Studies Rules. Oh, yes. Uh, I knew makes it. sense. Yeah, yeah. So, because yeah, the TSR name came around before the story publishing was even a concept. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, because it was a, a basically a miniatures uh, battle game. Yep. Uh, setup game mechanics and whatnot. Okay, so obviously you got that one wrong. So, Tom, are you ready for your next question? No. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad, because here it comes. Aside from the movie novelization, what was the title of the first Star Wars novel? Penned by Alan Dean Foster and released in 1978. See, I actually have this somewhere in this room right now. And this is the <laughs> crappy thing about quizzes 
Uh, Splinter in the Mind's Eye. That is Splinter correct. Of the Mind's Eye. Yeah. Yes, that is correct. Wow. That's good. I like that. Uh, Tom, Tom says as he glances at his shelf of his copy. Uh, uh, yeah, no, it's not nearby. Uh, I, but I was absolutely blanking on it. I, I actually got that uh, that novel at a railroad salvage shop in Mulberry Grove, Illinois. Mm. Oh, my gosh. You, you, uh, you, you also have to remember that Tom worked at a used bookstore for a number of years. That did, yeah. Right. I was going to say that you got it at, at a railroad savage, or salvage shop shop you know not the first choice for book shopping i would think hmm. oh no but uh we'd, we'd go over there all the time just to see what fell off the train lately you know? <laughs> <That is amazing. laughs> literally right. fell off the train <laughs> all right avis your fourth question <clears throat> okay an important aspect of the game mechanics is determining each character's ability scores mm -hmm. name the six categories of these statistics Oh, okay. You got strength, and dexterity, intelligence, charisma, constitution, wisdom. That's it. That's all six. There you go. I ah. Nice. <laughs> good I, job, sir. I thought you were going to. Constitution is the one I always forget. That's, that, yeah. that, was, that was good. Yeah. I, I, I almost thought you were going to say, okay, those are the six. Now name the six, uh, the 12 subdivisions of those six. And I was going <laughs> to like, ah. Oh. Part two. <gasps> yeah. Uh, yeah. Dumb, Tom, damn Tom, you and Earth Arcana. Tom, are you, are you much of a and a d veteran? Not really. No, I haven't played it a lot. But you have played. I have. Yes. No, see. Well, I mean, he's a geek, so yeah, of course he has. <laughs> uh, <laughs> is, is, is that the genuine litmus test? Is that like the, the the if you had to break it down to a, to the most basic litmus test, would it be whether or not you have actually played D and D? Uh, I would say there's a pretty strong argument for that. Larry Schmolinger and I used to play it in junior high at mm. lunch. Was that first edition? Oh, gosh. Yeah. I mean, I think it was only edition back yeah. then. Yeah. <laughs> it was prior to advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. OK. All right, Tom, your next question. A series of novels beginning with Heir to the Empire, published in 1991, mm. jump started interest in Star Wars and formalized the branding of the expanded universe. Which author wrote that series? Uh, yeah, this one I know, uh, because, and I've actually read the books, Timothy Zahn. Yep. That is correct. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. And great books, by the way. Like, uh, yeah. it, it does sadden me a little bit that those are not being made into a rightful sequel in movie form. I do like, give, okay, given, let's just bracket off, given that they decided we don't want to be bound by the previous novels, we're, we're not letting any of them be canon, I do like what they're doing with Thrawn and letting Timothy Zahn kind of resurrect him and mm. reimagine him. It's pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah, that is pretty neat. <clears throat> All right, Amos, this is your final question uh -oh. and your last chance to tie with Tom. Okay. The current score is three to two. Uh -huh, uh -huh. All right, Amos. The original Dungeons and Dragons box set mm -hmm. described only three character classes. Mm. <laughs> Thief was introduced as a fourth main class in the first expansion, mm -hmm. but I want to know what were the first three classes? Oh, this is actually, oh, I'd been better off if you asked me the original four, uh, original three uh, races, but, um, oh, beast eater. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the 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 tricky part is was it barbarian or fighter? Okay. Uh, it was cleric, and it was uh, uh was panda. It, was it magic user or wizard? Like I don't know how specific you want to get, but I, those are the three. So, it was the fighters, the fighter type, the cleric type, and the wizard type. So it was, it was one melee, one healer, and one uh, magic. Right. That is like ninety percent of the way there. I'm going to give you full credit. For this one, the actual classes as named in the box set are Whoa. cleric, fighting man, and magic user. Uh, he used all those words, yeah. so I think you're right. You got to give him. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He actually said fighting man, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Uh, uh, I think I I think you said bar barbarian. He man said barbarian, or but then later he's like, you know, the fighting man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I think that's how it happened. Uh, 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 All right. So we are now tied three to three. And out of and beer. Tom, 
intense. <laughs> <laughs> Tom has one final question to possibly pull out the win. Uh oh. Only considered secondary canon and highly despised by George Lucas, the Star Wars Holiday Special contained an animated segment that was the first appearance of which character that later appeared in The Empire Strikes Back? Boba Fett. That is correct. Mm -hmm. And for the mm -hmm. win, there it is. Tom. Wow. I was because you went TV on the last one. It saved me. <laughs> <laughs> oh if man. If you had right. gone with the like the, the 2003 comic series, I'd have been like, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I wanted to present challenging, fun questions without getting like just ridiculously difficult. Yeah, no, it was a good balance. I like that. Yeah. Cool. All yeah. right. Um, thanks for playing. Amos, um, we talked about our, our vacations and, uh, Tom was talking about his travels mm -hmm. to Australia. Um, w what do we have on deck as a, as an extension to that topic? Well, so I was thinking about it with all of us having, tr having traveled recently, um, and all of us being tech minded and, um, uh, at least two of us being parents. So, uh, like what tips Tip, tips, tricks, and uh, uh, travel novelty th thoughts that have you guys had? Because I've got a ton of them. I've got uh, like uh, I found I finally found a way to sleep, and it sounds so stupid, but I cannot sleep on airplanes. Can't can't stay awake. It's it's been a balancing act. Um, so I've always had to sit in the aisle. So my my first tip, uh, I've always had to sit in the aisle because I've got knee problems. So I decided to eschew the knee problems and have the smallest kid sit next to me so I could use their leg space. And I sat next to the window and I actually got like a four hour nap on a plane. It sounds completely stupid, but it's something I had never considered. No, put the that's kid a cool next hat. to you to use their leg space and take a nap against the window. Cause the window is definitely the better sleep seat. Right. But then if you, if, if you've got the knee problem, what are you going to do that? What a smart workaround. Yeah. Uh, and, and I mean, we're all fairly tall here. Tom, you're a little taller than I am. I'm a little taller than Kent. It's not comfortable when you're sitting in coach ever. Oh no, ever. ever. Yeah, yeah. There's there's not a there's not a oh I you can know, just it, do this. It ends up hurting me in my butt the most. Like I can I can like you know like not put something under the the uh, the mm -hmm. seat. I, I always take whatever goes under the seat in front of me and I put it under my legs, mm -hmm. and that almost works like a like a footstool kind of. Mm -hmm. So so I can I can deal with that. But then those seats, they just eventually I just start aching because mm. you can't lay back. Yep. It's awful. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah, do you guys even use the, uh, the the seat recline function? No. Uh, I, I I cannot. On, uh, it doesn't do me any good. I, yeah. Say, same here. Like, I, I, I think I've the been, last time I reclined a seat was like 15, maybe 20 years ago is the last time I, I used that. I don't use it based on the fact that there have been too many times I've been trying to sleep on the little thing in front of me and the person in the seat in front of me would use their recline and smack me in the head. Yeah. So now I'm like ultra conscious that I'm intruding the space behind me. So if, I, if I don't want to do it. If it actually worked and I would fall asleep, I would just turn around and be like, I really apologize. <laughs> like, yeah. But this, <laughs> this, this will let me sleep. Yeah. Is there anything I yeah. can do? Can I buy you a beer or something? Right. But yeah, right. I, yeah. It doesn't do me any good. Why would I like inconvenience the person behind me for no reason? Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yep. So Amos, I thought of a, a, a hack for parents that mm. want to travel. You were talking about, you know, us being parents and, and uh, things that make the trip more enjoyable. Uh, I, I think traveling for, for parents that have children, the best way to go, if you want to have the most fun, leave the kids at home. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> send them on their own trip. Yeah, that's it's <laughs> yeah. Send them to grandma's. I mean, th th there's legit merit to that. That's. that's <laughs> but then you can't do your your seat hack. You have to bring one of them, uh, right? The smallest one, <laughs> or or exactly. just or just hope the person sitting next to you is a small kid and, and <laughs> their really parent doesn't mind one. you encroaching their space. <laughs> you go through the plane. <laughs> can I borrow your child? Yeah. <laughs> No, 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 no. I, I bought two tickets. I just need well, your kid to sit in the middle. <laughs> Not creepy at all. Yeah. Um, how, about, how about you, Tom? What, what kind of tips you, do you have? You know, uh, the biggest thing I ran into traveling overseas uh, was the power converter mm -hmm. issue. Uh, so with my laptop, I was able to get an adapter that fit on, because it was MacBook Pro, you know, it, I, I could slide out the American thing and slide in the Australian mm -hmm. thing. Um, but for all my other stuff... I was using these old adapters and they kept falling out of the wall. Uh, 
so one of the best things I purchased was a voltage converter, but it was also a power strip. Mm. So it would it would allow me to plug whatever into it without even worrying about it. Like I didn't have to worry about the power mismatch, uh, but it had like normal US inputs uh, and you could just plug everything in. The downside was because it's a an actual voltage converter, it actually it has a fan in it. Mm. So you can't just leave it on overnight if you're in a small room, right. which we pretty much always were. Uh, so so it's not perfect, but I, I highly recommend looking into voltage converter. They're only like 20 or 30 bucks, and it basically gives you a power strip on the road. And the one I bought uh, came with adapters for it. Like it, its natural end was a European converter, but it had an Australian converter and it had a Japanese converter and all these others. Nice. Um, something, something along the same lines. If you are a MacBook user and you've plugged your MacBook in and you felt the heat coming off of the the power converter, you know, for the, the 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 Apple power converter that goes from you know the whatever. Mm-hmm. If you go overseas, do not do that. Do not like no think you know how hot that thing's gonna get. Because when you go from one twenty to two twenty, oh yeah, the heat on those bricks is a lot higher. Yeah, it's auto converting, oh. but it's a practical hot plate. But it's, it's a, straining it, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot hotter overseas than it is in the old good, good old US of A. Yeah, in fact, sure. Eileen did, didn't have a converter for hers, and mm-hmm. so I ran to an Apple store in Sydney thinking like, oh, I'll just buy one. You had to make an appointment. Mm. They were like, mm, we don't just sell those. Like, you gotta, oh, wow. you gotta talk to somebody. Uh, and I, and so we ended up not getting one because I'm like, eh, I don't have time for that. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So my next, uh, my my next tip is going to be, um. Don't pick your nose during turbulence. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> I, I please let there be a story that goes with this. You don't always know when turbulence is coming, though. How no, do you avoid that? No, you you don't. Uh, but I did, <laughs> <laughs> and, and and I took the risk, not thinking about the risk, and I should have ORM'd myself because it, that was just it, it. So that basically for the, that was that was like leaving Atlanta. Um, you know, uh, yeah, it, 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 that was our first flight coming home. So the entire rest of the time, I was basically blowing my nose and blowing booger shields and, and whatever out of my nose. <laughs> like it, it was, it seems like the stupidest thing, but now in hindsight, I'm like, yeah, that, that would have been a really good thing not to do. Mm. Right. <laughs> so, so I've got a, advice. I've got a, a tip for saving money. Uh, I actually used this tip myself when we went to Austin mm. for South by so wasted. If you travel for work or if you if you have any potential at your workplace of traveling by air, I highly recommend that before you go on this trip or you know before it's even uh, booked that you go ahead and sign up for all of the frequent flyer uh, things you know with with Delta, Southwest, uh, American, whatever you can find, sign up for them. They're 100% free. And be sure when when the when your company books your ticket that they include your frequent flyer miles uh, account on that because you gain these miles for free, basically. Mm. The, your company is buying uh, the ticket for you, but you get the miles on your personal account. I was able to fly via Southwest, I think, uh, to Austin from El Paso for I believe it was $7.00. Because I was able to nice. use points that work gave me basically for free. Right. That yeah. So that was that's my uh, money saving tip for travel. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely do that. I I, I always I always have signed up for those, and it's it's crazy how you suddenly can get close to status. On I, I remember back this was in the '90s, but I was just flying home to St. Louis a couple of times a year. And then I think I flew out to New Mexico to visit a friend, and I got like frequent flyer status on Continental. I mean, this is how long it was because Continental was still an airline. But, <laughs> Wait, uh, what was, what's that? <laughs> on Brand then, F Airlines. S- suddenly, the next year, like I'm this kid working at a bookstore for thirteen thousand dollars a year, and I had like priority luggage loading and upgrades <laughs> to first class and and stuff. Like you just never know, especially on the on on the less but like you're not going to get that on United. You're probably not going to get that on Delta. But, you know, on some of these smaller airlines, especially Southwest has some pretty cool perks. Mm. Uh, yeah. s- speaking of perks, if you happen to if you plan on coming to Alaska for anything, 
uh, I, I would inquire or, or, or uh, not inquire. I would I would suggest that you check out Alaskan Airlines. They have this companion fare. You sign up for the credit card, whether or not you ever use the credit card. It costs forty nine dollars a year or whatever. But one ticket per year, you get a free companion fare. This is one mm. of the ways we save so much money flying to yeah. Atlanta and back is my round trip ticket included my daughter. My wife's round trip ticket included our niece. So we didn't have to pay for their airfare, and they got all the same, everything else that we had. Uh, and it cost us $49 a year. And we know we're going to fly together out of the state at least once a year. So it's like a $49 ticket plus taxes, which ends up being like 70 bucks or whatever. If you know you're always going to be flying on the same airline because it's a hub where you are or something, mm-hmm. it's definitely worth looking into the credit cards. Uh, in fact, I would add, uh, if you're thinking about frequent flyer stuff, check out the pointsguy.com. Have you guys ever used that website? Mm-mm. Uh. The points guy, I, I think he's got a staff now, but it started as just one guy who, who gamed all the frequent flyer systems and would share on his blog all the things he learned. And it's still like one of the best places if you're like, well, wait a minute, I, I have to, let's say, you know, like I have to fly American Airlines all the time. Go there and just look it up and he'll tell you, like, here are the things to know to make the best use of the frequent flyer. Here's the tricks. Here are the hacks to kind of get around and and, and hmm. get status without having to maybe fly a lot. You know, like there are these things where you may not realize, oh, if I just like fly to Detroit this weekend and there's a sale and it's 50 bucks, I'll suddenly have frequent flyer status for the next year and get upgraded to first class. Maybe that's worth mm. it for you. He, he's on to stuff like that. Wow. It, it, it that is of, amazing. It kind of reminds me of a BGR back in the day before they were bought out. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. totally. That's awesome. Um, oh, that's great. We're going to include a, a link in the show notes to that. That is yep. pretty awesome. The points Yeah. The points Yeah. Let me paste that while Kent uh, talks about his next tip or trick. <laughs> <laughs> um, travel light. Uh, that's so w- one of the things that, that I learned a long time ago with, uh, traveling for work, if you're going to someplace that's civilized in any way, like as in they've got a Walmart mm. or a dollar general or anything like that, you don't have to take toiletries. You don't have to take like half of the stuff you're going to need. If, if you're going to somewhere that's going to be, uh, uh, I don't know, any, anywhere near a town whatsoever. Just travel with a carry-on so that you don't have to mess with checking the bag. You don't have to mess with baggage claim at the end of your flight. You can just walk straight to security and then walk right out the door when you arrive at your destination uh, because it, it's super cheap to buy like cheap, you know, just cheap little like a little travel kit with deodorant and toothpaste and toothbrush and stuff like that. Well, uh, that is that is a, a, a trick that I learned a long time ago. And, and I I always do it now. We had 10 people at Disney World. And the first night we got there, we took a trip to Walmart, bought, spent three hundred dollars and we had lunch and breakfast for everybody toiletries for everybody and we didn't have to pack any of that crap so all of us brought one suitcase yep. for a whole 10 day trip and my suitcase was actually half full of empty sandwich containers for for the days <laughs> when we were going around in the backpacks because everybody had color coordinated backpacks and sandwich containers to make sure no one got mixed yep. up with stuff but yeah that's uh, 300 dollars yeah, oh, 10 people for 10 days and in uh it an add on to that as well. If you know that you're going somewhere for, you know, like two weeks at a time or something like that, you don't have to take two weeks worth of clothes. Just right. make sure that you stay that, that the hotel that you book or, you know, or if you're staying with family or whatever, this is a no brainer. Um, but if you, if you're staying at a hotel, be sure that you book a hotel that has on premises laundry. Mm-hmm. Um, I did this, um, a couple years ago, actually when, uh, the, the trip that I met the have a drink show crew, um, and I met up with hot beverages, in fact, uh, near Cincinnati, it was that trip. Um, I stayed at a place that had on premises laundry and, um, yeah, it, it uh, no, it's it, it, absolutely the, our two week trip to Australia. Uh, I didn't take two weeks worth of clothing because we knew that we were going to be in Melbourne staying in a place that had in laundry in the room because it was oh. basically a, like like an apartment that was rented out. It wasn't even an Airbnb. It was like a condo that rented out its empty apartments to people who were on vacation. Uh, and we were staying with family during the wedding, so we got to use their laundry. Uh, that's, that's a huge thing. There's also this um, 
sink laundry. There's a bunch of different detergents that do do in sink laundry where you can buy these little packets and you just like this is great. Like I only took a couple pairs of socks, but I would use the in sink laundry like you you put this detergent in there and just let it sit. And then you pull it out, rinse it out. It's fine. And all you got to do is let it dry. Then you can even use a hairdryer to dry it. Um, it's it, it it huge because I mean socks aren't small, right? Yeah, no, that's mine are. That's amazing. That's like some <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's like some sci-fi stuff right there. Uh, no, that sounds awesome. I'll have to look into yeah, that. there's a, a the wire cutter is is the one that tipped me off to it because they have a great uh, travel section. Um, I'm trying to find the name of it though. Uh, MB in chat wants to know if uh, Merritt Motel offers laundry service. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, we did. I think Brian did some laundry here. I don't think anybody else did. Uh, do, do you guys know about packing cubes? That's the other trick for packing light. No. So, you they're they're really dumb, simple, and when you first look at them, you'll think, well, "Wait, that's going to take up more space." But uh, what they are is just little zippered bags. So you put all your socks in one, you put all your shirts in one, mm -hmm. and you squish them in there and then zip them up. And then everything, like, I still roll up my shirts and everything, right? But you put mm -hmm. them in a packing cube so they're nice and tight. And not only does it kind of help save space, but it makes it dead simple when you unpack to be like, where are my socks? Oh, they're right here. Boom. Wow. And mm. it's one thing. And then my shirts, one thing. Uh, so it's so much easier to go through your luggage looking for stuff. Then. We, uh, w whenever I would deploy, nice. I would do the roll up and, uh, you know, just, uh, I would actually roll everything up and throw it in a Ziploc bag. So when I arrived there, I'd have all these zip Ziploc bags and just pull them out. Um, I learned something from my, my, my stepson. He was actually rolling, like he'd, he'd roll it up in a certain way to where the very last end of it ended up being a flap that would actually roll or uh, fold around whatever he had just oh, rolled like clever. pants or whatever. Yeah. yeah so yeah. it was, it was, it wouldn't like unroll if you just let it go. So you don't need the Ziploc bags in that case, you know, you could just throw it in there. And that's how he packed yeah. all his stuff. And his bag was half the size of the twins <laughs> bags when we left. And I was like, Amazing. that's, that's awesome. So yeah, definitely roll that's your clothes. Great. If you're worried about, if you are, are so worried about wrinkles that you can't put up with a few wrinkles in your clothes, then you need to plan on ironing it out once you get there. Like, if you care, you care. And if you don't care, you just saved a bunch of time. So Totally. <laughs> All right. Uh, any, uh, any, any last uh, major tips that, uh, that you guys have discovered in the last trips that you've taken? Those, are, those were pretty much the major ones that, uh, that I had on deck, yeah. I guess the only thing I'd add is you might check out uh, bags that are designed to fit under the seat mm. for your carry-on because, I mean, in some cases you could do a rollerboard and one of those. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I, when I went to Australia, I had one checked luggage that had the bulk of my stuff, and then I had this Samsonite that fit under the seat. And you could, you could pack a lot in there. And if you've mm -hmm. ever seen flight attendants or crew – uh, even pilots with these like little tiny rollerboards, and you're like, "What is that?" Mm -hmm. That's that's what it is. Like yeah. they 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 fit anywhere, and they're really they're really handy. I would just like to take this opportunity to ask if uh, we could just one one more time. I'm just going to ask America, just ask the world in general. Can we please get a flying 101 class that is mandatory before people fly? <laughs> can can this can this happen? Because oh uh, no, every, you know what? Every time I well, see someone uh, with a duffel that, bag. Like no, this that's huge the thing is like having bag. my Samsonite under the seat in front of me meant I just didn't care. Like, yeah, yeah do whatever you're going to do in the aisle. As soon as I'm out, I'm out. <laughs> I don't have to pull anything down. Yeah, they, oh, it, I, I, I find flying so frustrating, not because of the anxiety of being in a metal tube that I have no control over that can plunge seven miles to my death, but because of the other people that just don't understand how much they're inconveniencing everyone around them. So Yeah. Yeah, right. I've never had a problem with flying, but it's the the airport experience that's yeah. the most stressful. All right, uh, we're we're going to talk about a, a thing that Tom is doing or has just recently done or is in the process or however. But Kent, we have an update to your Facebook experiment. Let's hit that real quick before we get out of here. Okay, right on. Yeah, so uh, about three months ago, I did a, a completely unscientific experiment with Facebook. I was noticing that I was having a you know, not fun at all. Whenever I'd go to Facebook, that was a long time coming several years, uh, of not having a great time with Facebook, mm -hmm. but, but I've noticed over the last few months that it had gotten, uh, it became a negative experience, mm. uh, lots of things. So I wanted to see, like, I wanted to quantify that. 
um, very unscientific. I opened up my Facebook app on my phone and I took a, a uh, count of what I saw in order. Uh, I put them in two different categories, positive and negative, And I further broke those into categories where b- what I considered contributing to a positive experience was a friend or family life update, uh, an encouraging message of some sort, and then anything that's entertaining, like, you know, sharing a funny picture or video or something like that. And then the things that contributed to the negative experience were advertisements, uh, any sort of a hateful message, like anything like it's just overly negative. Uh, and then anything whatsoever having to do with politics, whether I agreed with the message or not. Um, I know that's oversimplified. It was completely unscientific. But what I found was that after scrolling through 50 messages or 50 uh, posts on Facebook was that I had 24 positive and 25 negative. So it's roughly 50-50. But, I mean, is that something you wanted? If you half hate your experience of something, are you going to continue doing that? So I stopped going to Facebook on a regular basis. All I would do, like if someone tagged me in a photo or something like that, I'd get a notification. So I'd go look at it. But typically, like when I'd open the app, I would see like the first post that's there, whatever it is, a friend, uh, you know, had a, had a baby or something like that. So I would see something, some Facebook content other than things that I was tagged in. Well, a couple of weeks ago, no, actually it was last week. Uh, I was sitting around and I opened up Facebook because I was tagged in something, but then I decided to just see, and I just started scrolling and I saw something that I actually liked, like physically, like push the like button. And I'm like, okay, wow. I haven't liked anything on Facebook in quite a while. So I scrolled down and I saw something else that I enjoyed. I was like, what the hell is going on here? Scrolled down, saw something else. And I was like, oh, this is a conversation I want to engage in. Scroll down, saw something else positive. So I was like, you know what? It's time to do part two of my experiment. Uh, Facebook has been going through a lot of uh, changes with their algorithm lately. And um, I think, uh, at least for me, it has improved the Facebook experience quite a bit. Mm. So I redid the exact same experiment that I did the first time. Same categories, everything. I ended up with... Let me scroll to the bottom here. I ended up with 34 positive and 16 negative. That's that, that's a pretty big swing. Yeah, it that is. That is a I mean, huge improvement. Because you didn't do multiple takes, it could be just coincidence like, mm-hmm. oh, it happened to be a good day. So it'd be interesting to see if that right. stays mm-hmm. up like that. But yep. that's, yeah, that's now, cool. I do, have, I do have to ask, have you changed anything about your Facebook usage or profile in, nope. in the, in the I, intermediate time. And that, that'd be the other thing is for this to be a real result, you'd have to not change any settings. Oh, yeah. Or, I mean, this was completely unscientific. But I, no, I, I haven't posted to Facebook. I haven't done anything um, in, in the meantime. I, I Same as I was doing before where someone tagged me in something, I would open it, see what it is, and then I'd close the app. Well, I, I think uh, that just means we need to keep this going every couple months. You need to go in there and yeah, do that. Uh, I might yeah, that's make cool. it a quarterly thing. Yeah. Um, and uh, if if Facebook can provide just internally with their algorithms that they can provide a more positive experience just in general, even if it is just by your standards, of course, everybody's standards can be a little differently. Um, maybe they are finally paying attention to doing something right because yeah, I, no. I haven't been on Facebook. I haven't even missed Facebook since before my trip. I would love for the audience to let us know what your Facebook experience is like by uh, hitting us up on Facebook on the Ritual Mystery page. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a kind of a self-selecting thing, right? Yeah, if you're not going to go to Facebook to tell them, then you probably don't go to Facebook, which means you don't have much right. to tell. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right, Amos, uh, what else we got going on this week? As he steps away from the microphone. Um, so the, 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 this, uh, so I'm 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 more honest about things than I should be, and this is going to be another one of those moments. This is oh, a, th- this is this is Tom Merritt's Pilot X. This is actually my my signed copy, uh, one of, one of my one of my signed copies. Um, I took this with me on the trip. Because I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm finally going to have some downtime. I'm going to read this instead of watching stupid movies and things like that. I'm going to sit back and just kind of enjoy this book. And as we were arriving at the airport, I used, I used this. I had this in the same pocket as I had the boarding passes on my, my carry-on luggage. One of my kids saw it, and they were like, 
Oh, so you're not going to do anything podcasting, but you're going to read a book by a podcaster. <laughs> and I was like, why are you such an asshole? But, <laughs> but that's a good point. So I, I ended up not reading it because, well, that would have been counterintuitive or counter the, the mission. Um, but I've since started reading it. Well, restarted because I actually had read a few passages just before. Um, but I have to finish this. Like, I have to read this very soon because there is a sequel that is going to be coming out in a few months or, well, several months maybe, depending on the process, by the same author, this this random Tom Merritt guy. That I've, I've, heard, of, I've heard of him. Yeah? Me, I haven't. No, no. I, I don't suppose you'd ever met him. I mean, it'd be a little difficult. Um, is, he, is he do, like, kung fu or something? Uh, no, that, that, that Star Wars thing Kent was talking about earlier. That's what he does. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Ter- Terrace Kazi. Yeah. I think he, yeah he Kazi. A He's a Terrace Kazi warrior. Yeah. Uh, um, so, Tom, uh, how uh, you funded this? Well, I don't say funded. I guess funded would be an ad- accurate word. Yeah. Uh, got, um, it, got enough pre orders. Right. Yep. Through Ink Shares. Um, how's that process going now of uh, Trigger? Yeah, so Trigger got the pre-orders, and Monday I handed in the manuscript. Uh, They also send you a couple of questionnaires where you have to tell them things like, you know, this is what I would imagine the cover would look like, and these are spoilers that you shouldn't use in any of your press releases, and you know, and 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 places they might want to go to to hit up people uh, to be guests and all of that, and of course just just basic fundamentals about the book for for the publishing aspect of it so yeah the next thing i'll do is they'll they'll assign me an editor and uh, we'll start polishing it up uh, then it'll go through copy edit then there'll be a illustration process uh, they'll probably th- there's definitely going to be an audiobook on audible audible is very interested in it so there'll be the, that whole thing of getting a narrator and 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 everything so uh yeah it's it's starting the wheels are starting to turn i'm very excited now how long did this process take for pilot x because you you did Pilot X the same way through Ink Shares. Yeah, it took it took about a year. Yeah, just 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 less than a year for Pilot X. Um, is this process going to take less time or, or more time? No, this it'll probably be about the same. So we kicked off the the Ink Shares funding in March, uh, and we haven't set a, a time yet. That that that'll be something we have to talk about soon. But because uh, because one of the things publishers have to do is give enough time to get everything ready and do the marketing and get in Publishers Weekly and mm-hmm. get the store orders lined up. And then they also have to put that date on a date where they're not putting something else out because they right. don't want to undermine their own stuff. So uh, my guess is it'll probably be sometime in March next year. Mm. Now, the, the really important question. Mm. I, I, know, I know I remember last time when, when, you, when you could finally reveal the cover um, – the, the main point was that you couldn't you couldn't express to people properly because everything's a visual or audio medium and you needed a tactile uh, sensory to to really understand it but are you going to have this 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 texture on the cover again because the texture not only does it, it it gives the book kind of a different feel to it just looking at it yeah but when you're holding it it automatically feels classic yeah, no, it, 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 it that was really cool, and I hope we do something like that again. Yeah. Hmm. Do you have a uh, an illustrator lined up for the cover? Have you got? No, one we haven't watch? even got to that point yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's awesome. Uh, it's 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 going to be a, a real thing. It's not going to be some random stuff that you're that you may have uh, heard elsewhere. And if you were following it, you got another book by Tom Merritt for free, um, for the first couple of days, I believe. Uh, yeah. Uh, this one here, Gallium. Yeah, there you go. Uh, you got a PDF of Gallium, and uh, Joel Duggan did the co- cover of the print version and the ebook that's coming out. Um, this one will be out this summer. So that's awesome. And uh, yeah, excellent. I made sure I snagged that. So oh, good. <laughs> Congratulations, Tom, on yet another literary success. Right. Thank you very much. Now, is is writing Fingers something crossed. that you've always wanted to do, or is it kind of something that developed out of your love of, of reading? No, I've I've. I've been writing since high school. Uh, I started trying to write a novel in high school and I made many attempts over the years. And when I was living in Austin in the nineties, I, 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 I wrote kind of a novella and then I wrote the first book that I ever put out as a self-published book. Uh, it, it took me 10 years to, to finally perfect. Mm. Uh, so yeah, it's been, it's been something I've been doing for a long time, longer than podcasting really. Mm. Um, well, and now would be a good time. What else are you doing? What else? Where else can people find you? Should there be some random person watching us right now that doesn't already follow you and and, uh, and know you in all the places? 
Oh yeah, uh, TomMerritt.com is where I collect all the stuff together. Uh, so Daily Tech News Show is is my main show uh, that I do every day with Sarah Lane and Roger Chang and guests. And uh, we talk about the tech news of the day. If you're a patron, you get an expanded version of that that we call Good Day Internet because uh, we don't we let ourselves drift from technology and talk about all kinds of stuff. Uh, and then I also do Sword and Laser, science fiction and fantasy book club podcast with Veronica Belmont. I do Cord Killers, uh, which is about TV and movies and watching them on the internet. And I do Current Geek, uh, which is just Scott Johnson and I getting a chance to geek out about stuff we love. Awesome. And right on. And one more place that you can find Tom, our good friend Fitz actually published a Medium article all about oh, yeah, Tom. Yeah, that was so cool. Yeah, so you can check that out. Go over to medium.com and find him at FitzChiv29. I don't think this is the most recent article, but it is one of the recent ones. It's uh, in the first two or three in the list. Yeah, it wasn't, um, wasn't too long ago they posted it. Yeah, so so check out Fitz's article about Tom. Um, also, speaking of cord killers, uh, I had the privilege of being on Cord Killers last week. It was a blast being on that show. Go over to cordkillers.com and uh, you can check out another place where Tom and I had a conversation. So yeah, no, that was a blast. So uh, uh, me and Kent, we we always uh, like we we relish in the, the opportunities we have to work with some of our our idols in the podcasting world, and you know Tom, Brian, Justin, like you three are kind of like you know royalty in 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 our <laughs> circles as far as podcasting goes. Like not like real royalty, but <laughs> we're, we're not groveling anymore. All right, we've, yeah, we've finished also the don't groveling. Have a castle, so yeah, yeah. well, yeah. yeah, they're not royalty. <laughs> Famous, they're deities. Oh, like, hey, get it right. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Uh, Forty-three. Um, but Kent was going on was was going to be on Court Killers, and then you know that recorded while I was while I was in Florida, and coming back, and he's like, "Hey, uh, have you listened to that yet?" And I'm like, "No, I haven't had a chance. I haven't had any podcast anything until today when I caught up on like Jury or whatever." And uh, he goes, "Yeah, I hope I didn't make too much of an ass of myself." So I had that thought in my head, and as I'm listening to the episode, I'm like. Yep. No. He. No. Yep. Yeah. That's that. No. No. And about about two thirds of the way through, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna have to tell Ken. He kind of made an ass of himself. And then the last third, he he completely came out, had some great ideas, some great conversation starters. Like, there we go, Ken. You finally redeemed yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so now, now, well, now that I've criticized you, I have to go back and listen to my appearance on Court Killers. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I still haven't listened back to that episode. <laughs> I did not think you ever made an ass of yourself. I thought it was great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Tom. <laughs> hey, Kent, uh, where can people find you, man? I'm mostly living on Twitter these days. Check me out. RM underscore Del Noche over there. If you're interested in anything else I'm doing, just, Search Del Noche or Del Noche 77 on that mm. platform, and that's probably me. What about you, Amos? Uh, uh, well, it's really simple. Um, I'm Amos. That's my nickname, and I go by Ethan Kane online because why not? So E-T-H-A-N-C-A-I-N-E. Just look that up, and you'll either find the real Ethan Kane or you'll find me. We don't look anything <laughs> I like, so... <laughs> I've got the Jackie Hearn uh, problem going on. Um, and then, of course, you can find the show at Ritual Misery. You can submit ideas. There's a subreddit, uh, ritualmisery.reddit.com. Thank you, uh, uh, Jotmon. He's actually thrown some ideas in there in the past, and it's, it's been pretty awesome. Um, yep. And you can find all these links and more ways to support the show. Uh, give feedback at our website, ritualmisery.com. I'm going to click the little button before I forget because I forget. And... Uh, we are live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific on DiamondClub.tv and Twitch.com slash Ritual Misery. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. And thank you for listening, for Kent, for Tom, and for me. This has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. See if it works today. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> and it worked. All right, cool. Excellent. Yay. That actually <laughs> went really smooth.